Hello, I'm Liam O'Neill, and this is your June 2nd Sound of Hope China Brief. We have two stories for you. Shanghai tries to return to normalcy, but the return is slow. CCP media websites get top placement on platforms like Google, YouTube, and Bing. Shanghai's COVID lockdown officially ended on June 1st. At a press conference on May 31st, a civil affairs bureau official stated that, with some exceptions, no officials or epidemic personnel shall restrict residents' comings and goings. But the details are in those exceptions. Many areas are still closed or controlled, or rated medium risk or high risk. These areas have certain restrictions that may be contributing to the lag in the return to normalcy. 72-hour nucleic acid testing is required for riding the train in or out of Shanghai, and some companies are still operating at less than 50%. This is according to Xinhua News. Supply chains are still compromised due to shortages of materials and labor. Tesla and Volkswagen factories in Shanghai remain in closed loops. Until at least June 10th, and neither is at full capacity of production. Another contributing factor to the lag is that many have left Shanghai altogether. According to one resident who spoke with Sound of Hope, this has particularly hurt small businesses. Shanghai is China's financial center, with an estimated 646 billion dollar economy in 2021. Some analysts have suggested. That the dramatic downturn in Shanghai for nearly three months has equaled fully one percent of China's GDP. A recent report suggests that Google, YouTube, and other popular sites are placing Chinese state-controlled media sources at the top of search results. This is greatly helping China improve its soft power influence around the world. According to the Wall Street Journal, a new report from the Brookings Institute and the Alliance for Securing Democracy found that searches for China's human rights record and COVID-19 related content often reflect the CCP's stance in the top finds. Jessica Brandt, one of the lead authors of the report, studies authoritarian government influence on the internet. She expressed surprise: "Someone who searches for Xinjiang on Google is likely to encounter Beijing-friendly content." That whitewashes China's human rights record," she said. This is a reference, of course, to what rights groups call a genocide happening in China's northwestern province of Xinjiang, home to the Uyghur ethnic minority. The report showed that for six months, YouTube has put Chinese state media outlets in the top rankings. Google and Bing received the same results 90 percent of the time. A more specific example is from last week. When German anthropologist Adrian Zenz released the Xinjiang police files, the documents were obtained by hackers and show photos and other personal information of more than 2,800 detainees in Xinjiang detention centers. They also reveal involvement from multiple levels of the Chinese government. On May 26th, just two days after publication, a U.S.-based search for Adrian Zenz on Google top page. Yielded one Chinese state-run media result, while YouTube showed four videos in its first page. The results all attack Mr. Zen's academic credentials and claim he is lying. According to the report, the CCP once focused its censorship efforts only on insulating Chinese from supposed information threats abroad, but is now asserting itself quote through external propaganda aimed at foreign audiences. Another example is Fort Detrick, an American bio research military facility that the CCP contends was the source of COVID-19. Search for Fort Detrick on YouTube, and you'll find CCP narratives in half of the top 10 videos. The researchers noted that algorithms emphasize recent content, and that Chinese state-leaning media have advantages in this regard. The CCP has invested heavily in building international networks, news agencies, and broadcast channels to further its narratives abroad. 
According to the report, there are at least 19 sources not openly affiliated with the CCP, but regularly redistribute Chinese state media news through content syndication agreements. It increased the total prevalence of the CCP's messaging in topped results by nearly 10%. And that's all we have for today. Thanks for joining us. Please click like and share with your friends and family. We'll see you tomorrow.